Hello there, my name is Luca, better known as LegendVD here on YouTube, and today I want to introduce you to Jump In. In Jump In, you select from themed packets to build a ready to play deck. There are hundreds of potential combinations, and each packet has some built in variants, so you never know what to expect. It's perfect for newer players that want to experience a wide variety of gameplay while building their collection at a very affordable entry point. Even veterans will appreciate the ease of jumping into some games and seeing all the set's mechanics in action. You can enter the event using either 200 gems or 1000 gold, at which point you'll be presented with three random packets containing 20 cards each, including a rare or mythic rare and a lance to cast them. You can get a preview of what's in each packet by hovering over it, and you can visit the wizard's website to get a more detailed overview of the contents. Once you've picked your first packet, you'll be shown three more to help complete your 40 card deck. The options for the second packet are based on the colors of your first one, so you won't have to worry about ending up in too many colors. The best part about it is that all these cards are yours to keep. So with two guaranteed rares or mythics, a bunch more commons and uncommons, and an extra card reward after your first victory, this is packed with a ton of value. This is great if you want to experience limited magic without having to go through a draft first. It's a very casual environment and guaranteed to be a ton of fun. At any point you can resign from the event to enter it once again and choose new packets, or if you're enjoying your current configuration, you can play for as long as you want. Packets are constantly being updated with themes from new expansions, so you won't have to wait very long to find Dominaria United packets in the event. All packets are equally likely to appear, with the exception that for your first packet, at least one option will be a packet you've never selected in a previous run of the event, so there will always be a new theme to look forward to. Enough talk, let's dive right into the event and show you some gameplay. Alright, let's get into the event and I'll be using gold to enter. Our options are training, saboteurs, and dragon ramp, which sounds quite appealing, so we'll give that a try. And we can pair it with Wolf Pack, Enchanting, or Max. And I'm kind of liking the idea of some wolves paired with dragons. So let's take a look at our deck list before we jump into some games. And at one mana, we've got Massive Might as a pump spell giving trample. At two mana, Liberator to take out artifacts or enchantments. Scaled Nurture for ramp. Sporeback Wolf. Got the Scale Singer, which can provide some card advantage by letting us play Dragons of the Top. At 3 mana, the Lapis Orb of a Dragonkind can help us ramp into our Dragons as well, potentially Scry 2. The Familiar as a 2 2 Flyer can give other creatures flying. Then there's Band Together as a nice removal spell. Bird Admirer as a 1 4 Werewolf with Reach. There's Follow the Tracks as a ramp spell, can find one of these gates and put them in play. Hound Tamer, also quite powerful, can pay for mana to put a plus one counter on a creature. We've got Howl of the Hunt, which can potentially be used as a combat trick, giving our creature plus two plus two, untapping it at instant speed. So we can also pass a turn, let it transform to night time to transform our werewolves and still have a relevant play. Wolf Strike, another good removal spell. And then at four mana, there's the Muralists, which can find one of our dragons when it dies. The Mariner, another efficient werewolf. At 5, there's the Young Blue Dragon, can use the Adventure first to draw, and then a nice Flyer. We've got Burly Breaker as another large werewolf. And then topping off our curve, there's the Wolfkin Outcast. We've got Emerald Dragon, and Tovalar's Huntmaster is one of our two rares, and this card is amazing. A 6-6 that when it enters makes a pair of wolf tokens, and if it ever transforms to Knight, it can make wolf tokens when attacking, and use the 4-man ability to have our wolves fight opposing creatures. And then Dread Linerm, another powerful snake dragon that can be adventured to put counters on a creature and give hexproof until end of turn. And then a 7-6, that's hard to block. And finally Earthquake Dragon is the author rare, so we've got some very exciting green rares here. A 10, 10 Flying Trampler that gets a very big discount if we control a dragon. So we can uh, potentially pair this with the other dragons we've opened. And then our mana base has a nice bit of mana fixing with double Thornwood Falls. And we've got a couple gates as well for additional card advantage. Alright, let's jump into some games and see how our deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand's got a lot of tap lands. We do have a little bit of a ramp at least, so we can maybe play this on turn 4. 
And being on the play means that we won't get punished as much for being off to a slower start. So I'll give it a try. We'll also gain a bit of life to pad our life total. And then the plan is turn 3, orb, turn 4, breaker, hopefully a dragon on the following turn. Opponent leads with a black gate. Blue-black and infiltrator, so they've got some ninjas that are gonna try and sneak into play. For now, play our orb over liberator, so we can play our breaker next turn. But for now it's a Felstinger 3-2 Death Touch. So it lines up quite well against our Burly Breaker, but we will be able to play our Dragon on the following turn to then fly over, and this will keep the Felstinger at bay unless they can take out our Breaker. Opponent's attacking, that's aggressive. So they might have other answers for the Breaker. I see Grave Lighter to make a sacrifice it. That's too bad. Okay, now we could maybe diversify and play Liberator plus Familiar and then next turn play our Emerald Dragon in case they've got more removal here. So we'll give that a try. And this is a Dragon, so we can use the Orb so we can Scry. And then Mariner will keep. Land can go to the bottom. And I'm okay trading a Liberator for a Felstinger if they offer. Alright, it's gonna be a Kytus Pursuit making his discard. That's painful. So we lose our Dragon. But we still have other ways we can spend our mana here. I can uh, activate our Familiar to give the Liberator flying. Can just play Mariner and pass. I think for now playing Mariner is okay. So we'll hit for two in the air. Play Mariner and pass, and then there's still the gate we can activate later. So opponent with a nice controlling strategy here. Definitely ahead on cards, but we've got some heavy hitters we could cast if we draw them. And the orb providing a nice bit of card selection, so we can put future lands on the bottom. And there's one of their rares, the Biting Palm Ninja. Has Menace at the moment. But as long as we're empty-handed, it doesn't really affect us. So we'll untap. And uh, they also can't take the forest, so we could keep it in hand to pretend. For now, could give both our creatures flying and just try and race the opponents. Which might be a good idea. And then I don't need to show them the forest in hand, which might tempt them to remove the menace counter from the ninja. Opponent's got a falcon abomination to try and ambush the pseudo dragon here. That'll work. And it transforms to knight, which is another advantage of uh, passing without casting anything. Opponent's gonna hit us for 8, at least the zombie will go away. They could also use it for ninjutsu, which is quite synergistic here. And yep. And they've got a large one. 5-5, five, five. so we're down to 7. Opponent can have a look. Removes the menace counter, but sees a forest which they cannot take. And a massive might that would present lethal here for opponents out of other plays. Can use the gate first if we'd like, and uh, we'll still be able to massive mites just in case. Found a howl of the hunt. Well, let's see if this works. It does, and that's eleven damage. So close one here against the blue black, but despite all the interaction, we got the job done without even needing our rares. And let's claim our prize. What do we get? A Bride's Gown. Okay, let's resign and try a different combination. Our options are Balanced, Black-White Artifacts and Enchantments, High-Tech, Blue-Red Artifacts and Vitality. Let's give the Balanced a try. 
and the other options are Horde, Vitality, and Sneaky. I'm kind of liking Horde, as we can potentially make some treasure tokens, which will synergize with a balanced packet. Take a look at our deck list. At one mana, we've got Blood Fountain for some Graveyard Recursion, Ghost Lantern as well, Shambling Gas can make a treasure, Spirited Companion as an enchantment that draws, Deadly Dispute for more card draw, Horde Robber to make treasure tokens. We've got the Life of Toshiro as a powerful saga that eventually transforms into an enchantment creature. We've got the Night Singer's Disciple, another nice specialized card, Virus Beetle to make the opponent discard. Then the Recovery Unit for more Graveyard Recursion, Arrest as Removal. Blade Blesser benefits from having enchantments and artifacts in play. Sewer Plague as Removal. We've got Sculptor Merchant, which can also provide a lot of card advantage with our treasures and various small creatures we don't mind sacrificing. Undercity's Crouncher makes more treasure. And then Soul Transfers, one of our rares, a powerful removal spell, and if we control both an artifact and an enchantment, can also maybe get back a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard. At 4 mana there's a Grim Bounty for more removal. Kami gets to draw if we control an artifact and enchantment. And then Grim Hireling is our second rare, can make treasure tokens if we hit the opponent, and can sacrifice treasures to maybe take out opposing creatures, it's also very synergistic in our deck. And then Befriending the Moths, another Saga turning into a 2-4 flyer. And topping off our curve, we've got a 3-3 that we can sacrifice multiple times. And Naomi as a 4-4 that makes 2-2 Vigilant Samurai tokens when it enters or attacks. So yeah, our deck definitely wants to get the synergies going, control both artifact and enchantment. And then we've got a ton of removal and additional card advantage to back it up. And then our mana base, double Scoured Barons and two Black Gates for additional card advantage. Alright, sweet. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand's quite promising. Got some of our more powerful cards in hand. Just missing an enchantment to enable Naomi. And we'll play a tap land in case we pick up a 2-drop and a 3-drop we really want to cast. And Horde Robbers right on time here. Can maybe hit the opponent and make a treasure, which will be very helpful. Opponent blue-green does not have an early play, so Horde Robber is free to attack. And then I could play Hireling, I could play Befriending the Moths. Really want to kind of get both going so we can hit the opponent make more treasure. I think we'll play the Hireling and then hope to pick up a land next turn. Opponent's got a Counterspell, sadly. So a great answer to our rare. Alright, that's too bad. At least we still have our enchantment to pair with Naomi. As her opponent, a blue-green ramp deck, getting ready to cast our dragons. So we'll befriend our robber, make a treasure, and then Naomi can maybe make a knight next turn. We do have a blood fountain to get back her hireling, even just with one power, it's still quite effective. Draconic Mirrorless gets to Scry 2, thanks to Orb. And that's not a creature we want to necessarily kill and have the opponent find a dragon. Alright, so we'll hit with a robber and then play Naomi. So we make sure we control an artifact and an enchantment. Opponent has 6 mana total now, so we're in dragon territory for sure. And I don't know if a sewer plague is necessarily going to be good enough to deal with whatever they play out here. Muralist's attack, we'll take it. And our opponent passes. Kami's not a bad play here, as it'll get to draw. Although I might want to attack first, in case we need to Deadly Dispute for some reason. Can send in everyone. And uh, Linurm gonna try and untap the Muralists. Okay, so if we Sewer Plague, 
in response before it gains hexproof. It would at least shrink back down, but they can still trade for Naomi. So we might be better off just using Deadly Dispute on Naomi if they block. Although they'll have a bigger Muralist left over. But maybe that's okay. Or I can just force the trade, basically. So yeah, tough call. I think we'll uh, let this happen. And then we can Deadly Dispute. And the Soul Transfer is a clean answer for Muralists, as it will exile without actually triggering it. And then we can still play our Kami with both Artifact and Enchantment in play. And then Soul Transfer can also get back Naomi from the Graveyard. Okay, so that didn't feel too bad. Of course, they can cast their 7-6 Dragon as well now, which will trigger the Orb once again. So I'm not sure which of the two is more threatening. Opponent's playing an Organ Hoarder instead. And digging for maybe some interaction. Milling a Looter. And Archivist the play as well. They've got two cards left in hand, so we get to untap. And yeah, Soul Transfer is looking pretty good here. And then our Moth can attack. Could send Kami and the uh, Samurai, as our opponent wouldn't have any amazing blocks. Both modes. Get back Naomi over Hireling. And then... Problem now is if I play Naomi, I wouldn't have any artifacts left. So instead, let's just attack first. And probably keep back Horde Robber, since that's an easy block for them. Opponent takes a trade. And then I can either keep up Sewer Plague or play Blood Fountain. Could still opt to play Naomi. And then next turn, once it attacks, we can trigger it by having a Blood Fountain in play. Which I also don't mind. Sure. Opponent is at 8 after all, so we want to keep up the pressure. Scale Singer pairs quite nicely with Orb, as they get to scry to maybe set up the top of their deck to contain a dragon. And then, at the very least, they can disturb Archivists into a 2-1 Flyer. Our opponent kept both cards on top, that's scary. And the Polar Werebear, the play, has Hexproof until it deals damage. Okay. So what's next for us? Cannot Sewer Plague the Werebear to get Naomi through. So, yeah, proving to be a pretty annoying blocker. Now once it does block, we can finish it off with a Sewer Plague. So there's that to consider. So maybe it's okay to attack into it. And then I'll just attack with the entire team. Make a knight. And Blood Fountain can get Naomi back once again. So we'll finish off the Werebear. Can play a Scrounger as well to keep up the pressure. As our opponent is now down to 5. One card in hand. Linerm in exile and Archivist in the graveyard. So what's it gonna be? I guess there's also dragons on top they might cast with a Scale Singer. Right, it's going to be the seven-powered dragon getting to scry two. So our opponent's got two blockers. They're at a virtual three life since Moth goes unblocked. But they could survive until we drew 
the arrest to put on the worm. And then we should be able to attack for lethal. Alright, so a nice interactive game here against blue-green dragon ramp. So hopefully that gave you a glimpse into the gameplay of Jumpin, and as you could tell from these two matches we've played, it's incredibly varied, and you'll encounter a ton of different archetypes and strategies, which keeps the uh, gameplay very fresh and interesting. Alright, let's claim our prize. And we got a demonic bargain, so we got pretty lucky here to get a rare for our reward. There's a 5% chance that uncommons are upgraded to rares or mythic rares, so if you get lucky you get even more value than just the two rares that you get from your jump in packets. But yeah, as I've mentioned, a great event if you're a newer player looking to expand your collection, but also just a ton of fun to try out all these different archetypes without having to worry about doing a draft first, so it's a very low-stress environment. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.